backs, but they're really active up front. Uh, those three defensive linemen are really, really physical, and they get off the ball rather quickly, giving our uh, offensive line difficult time. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of our highlights from earlier in the first half. Bashal Tootin, 37 yards so far in this one as North Carolina A&T needs to try and get him going, looking for nine consecutive 100-yard rushing games. Trying to get him involved is extremely important for the Aggie offense that's been a staple in for the entire year. So hopefully they can develop a plan to not only allow him to become more physical, but also the Aggie offensive line. Charleston Southern has had a lot of success on offense here today. As we get a look at Alston Hooker, who went for a big run here, was able to break out of that tackle, looking like his older brother at the University of Tennessee on that run. Big run, staying active, moving his feet. But that, that Charleston seven. Southern defense getting off the football, getting to the quarterback. Anton Williams had another sack. The touchdown by Charleston Southern. Clear in the middle of the field out for the receiver. Catch the ball. Runs across for a touchdown. Tamon Cook then fielded this kickoff from the five-yard line and took it 95 yards to the house. Had plenty of blocks in front of him and showed off that 4-3 speed. Shows the importance of special teams. You can't get it done offensively. Show up special teams, score a touchdown. Made it a 7-7 ball game. And that is the Jersey Mike's halftime report. 7-7 here in Greensboro as North Carolina a and and Charleston Southern get set for half number two. It will be North Carolina a and receiving this opening kickoff here in the third quarter. After deferring the coin toss to begin the game. Jalen Fowler came in and threw two passes in the second quarter after not starting the ball game. So we'll see what kind of action he has the rest of the day. North Carolina a t trying to just get something going offensively. Only 72 yards of offense on the day. 133 yards so far for the Buccaneers. This one will be a line drive squib. It'll be fielded by Aaron Harris, and he is taken down at the 30-yard line. So the Aggies will have decent field position to begin half number Aaron two. Harris. Alan, what does the offensive line for North Carolina a and need to do here in the second half? It seems like they've been a little out of whack in this ballgame. They need to get back to doing what they've always done, being physical and being fast up front, making sure that we get off the ball and get our hands on the defender first and move them and create those lanes that have been there for the most part of the year for Bayshore Tootin and company. Jalen Fowler will work with Tootin in the backfield. Play action, Fowler towards the outside. That one knocked down and incomplete intended for Zach Leslie. That's the first time that we've called his name today. He has 1,866 career receiving yards. Zach Leslie has had a tremendous career here at 11 receptions for 120 yards against Norfolk State last week. It was his ninth career 100-yard receiving game. The handoff to Tootin, and there was nowhere for him to go. There's Gary Sega again. Great fit by the Charleston Southern defense. Brings up third down and Trying to get on perimeter. For the Aggies. There to make the stop. Big third down. Third and nine for North Carolina A&T. 
The Aggies are 0-3 in games where Tootin doesn't find pay dirt. Fowler has time, sails that one out of bounds. And it'll put a four in the box. So Caleb Brickhouse will come on and punt this one away for North Carolina a &T. The sun starting to shine here at Truist Stadium. It's been a cloudy day for the most part. Cloudy but beautiful day in Truist Stadium. Great atmosphere, great energy. Great day for college football. Caden Jordan back deep to receive. And that one almost blocked. And Jordan will secure the fair catch at the 33 yard line. So decent field position for the Buccaneers. As Charleston Southern will try and break this 7-7 tie less than a minute into the third quarter. So Tony Bartolo is back out on the field. He's got T.J. Ruff in the backfield with him. The handoff to Ruff. And he's pushing forward for four, five, six yards a carry right now. It, it seems like the defensive front of the Aggies is playing more on their heels. Yes, that Charleston Southern offensive line. So we're doing a great job getting off the ball. Bring those lanes for Ruff to get downhill. Ruff again on the carry, and that'll be good for a first down for Charleston Southern. That also offensive line just wants to get after it. So they get on guys and maul them, take them to the ground. It seems like they enjoy running the football. Bartolo under pressure, steps up, throws. That one is complete. Landon Sowers made the reception as we'll get another look. Steps up and throws. Makes a great adjustment. And this one's the previous play is under review. So we'll get another look at that throw and see what all the fuss on the Aggie sideline was all about. Here's Bartolo stepping up in the pocket. Sowers, one, two, has it. Nope, popped out right there. Popped out right there. And the Aggie sideline saw it. So that should be an incomplete pass. Great adjustment by the receiver. Just couldn't maintain possession. So we'll see what the replay booth decides. As we'll get another look. The replay official today is Tyron Anderson up here in the booth. Sowers pops out right there, hits the ground. He was able to trap it in his legs. J.D. Moore was out earlier for one play, and we haven't seen him since. We thought he would be more of an impact player in today's game. Just hasn't been available for whatever reason. Looking forward to seeing Moore. Had a great week last week against Robert Morris. And let's hear what Jake Grombach, our white cap, has to say. 
After review, the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. So it is a second down. Pass. And this one will come back. So a big play is erased. Now the officially, uh, officials don't remember where the ball is supposed to be spotted. So they might have to call up to the replay booth. Second and 10 from the 44 yard line of Charleston Southern. Second down and 10. The handoff to Ruff. And he is brought down after a gain of one. It'll be third and nine for the Buccaneers. We've seen Bartolo go deep a few times today and have success. A few times with Bartolo for the most part, he's been really, really consistent. And making those short passes, those out routes, and really just slowing down the game and controlling it, making it easy for Charleston Southern offense. And there was movement on that offensive line. False start. Offense number 79. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Looks like Jacob Tyski. back throws towards the boundary that one is complete and it'll be good for a first down and there's an in injured Aggie on the play drops back and throws it Landon Sowers who had dropped the pass earlier Able to haul it in that time for the first down. And it looks like Ty Williams is the shaking up Aggie. As we're going to take a timeout on the field. We're back after these messages. You're tuned in to the Big South on ESPN+. Plus. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. The B1 Performance Patch elevates physical functions by transforming carbs into glucose used to fuel the body. Don't compete without it. Visit buyb1.com or on social media at B1 Patch. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. 
Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Back with you here in Greensboro. Quick check of the Sunbelt Rentals scoreboard around the conference. Bryant trailing Holy Cross 22-0. Start of the third quarter. Gardner-Webb up on Campbell 14-7. And there's Sowers into the red zone and tripped up and taken down at the five as the Buccaneers start to open up the playbook and are moving quickly. First time we've seen the RPO run pass option by the Buccaneers. Ruff took the quick handoff and was brought down after a gain of one. Someone's helmet popped off. And of course that previous play was set up by a great run game by Ruff. And actually, that was the center, Ben Moxley's helmet. So he has to come off for a play. And Jack Rowland will come on and snap. So now a timeout taken. And Time Autry Denson doesn't want to risk Southern. it here in the this red zone first half. without his starting center. So he'll take a timeout, make sure his team can get Moxley back out on the field. That was probably the right move. Can't go wrong with keeping your starters in, especially in a moment like that. Charleston Southern 2-2 two and two in Big South play this season. As we get another look at the big pass over the middle. Great Just slipped right through. Middle of the field open. Great pass and catch. So the Buccaneers have continued to move the ball on offense today. And this North Carolina A&T defense uh, has been somewhat bullied by that offensive line of the Buccaneers today. They have been absolutely fantastic. It's a matter of want to. Guys just lining up and they seem to just want it at times a little bit more than North Carolina a and front. We spoke about it in the open, Alan, that today was primed to be a trap game for the Aggies. You don't have much on the line other than pride in this one. And then next week against Gardner-Webb, it's for the conference championship and the bid into the FCS playoffs. From the Aggie three. Bartolo will work from the gun. The handoff to Ruff shakes off the first defender. And is wrapped up and brought down. Great move by Ruff to make a guy miss. Charleston Southern's offense in the red zone, 19th in the country heading into today. It'll bring up third and goal from the five. Play action. Bartolo. That one is incomplete, and no flags come out. Pass. Incomplete. Defended. And that was defended by Aaron Harris, so the field goal unit will come on. Charleston Southern trying to use a little motion. Comes back across the formation. Harris with a great breakup. Sam Babouche is on for the field goal. It'll be a 22-yard attempt. Gelb to hold. That one is good. And Charleston Southern is on top by three. North Carolina A&T, seven. A 
Oh, the Buccaneers trot down the field and put points on the board. We got that big flex energy. This North Carolina A&T offense has yet to really show anything on the day. The only points for the Aggies have been via special teams. Charleston Southern defense is playing with extreme confidence, able to get some big stops. Great job up front. Anton Williams adding to his sack total, as well as numerous other guys being involved and being active and wreaking havoc on that Aggie offense. If you're Jeremy Martin right now and kicking things off, do you dare send it deep to Aaron Harris or Tamon Cook, or do you just leave this one short or kick it out of bounds and take the illegal procedure? If I'm him, I'm squibbing it again, kicking it away. Jeremy Martin off. From Cook. From the Aggies, number four, Aaron Harris. The sky kick, fair catch signaled for. And Nick Dobson was on the receiving end of that kickoff. It will be a and football at the 27 yard line. So now the Aggie offense will trot back out onto the field. A and T took about 50 seconds on their first drive to be stopped. Jalen Fowler is now in. Alston Hooker got the start today. Fowler, the typical starting quarterback, came in late in the second quarter. Bashal Tutin still in pursuit of nine consecutive 100-yard games. And now we have a whistle. Delay game flat. on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. So that'll be a five yarder. Just came out of trips formation. We can use a direct snap to Tootin. However, the five yard penalty negated the play. So Fowler will work from the shotgun first and 15. Play action. Has plenty of time. That one batted down. And it'll put a two in the box. There's an active Charleston Southern defensive line. That Buccaneer front free of Williams, Fields, and Davis has put a lot of pressure on that Aggie offensive line today playing with great motors and just being relentless. Second down and 15 for the Aggies. Fowler will go under center. Rolls out. Under pressure. Throws. That one is complete to Leslie. And it will be just shy of the first down marker by about a yard. 19, Zach Leslie. Fowler took a big hit from Anton Williams on that play. Third down and one for the Aggies. Third and one for North Carolina a and Kimbrough, the motion man, goes under center, takes the direct snap, and on the initial push, he didn't get it, but he rolled over the pile and was able to earn a first down. Not a lot of room to operate. Serious striking going on in those trenches. It's starting to get nasty in there. And actually, the officials have not awarded the first down. Now they have. I'm not actually sure what the delay was for. It looked like once he rolled over the pile, they had enough. So now the Aggies working quickly. The handoff to Tootin. 
Goes east to west and cuts it upfield. He's got room to go. He's to the 30, the 20, and is pushed out at the 12-yard line. Bayshold Tootin. Tootin gets the ball. It's on the edge, on the perimeter. Gives a little jab step. Makes one guy miss. He's off to the races. Great job by Tootin. Get us deep into the previous play. It's under review. Territory. And now there's going to be a review to see if he stepped out of bounds early. The previous play is under review. So we'll see if he stepped out. He came east to west. He was very close to the boundary, but uh, you can't tell from that angle. So we'll see what the replay official says. If on that one. It was very close to that white chalk. Our referee today, Jake Gromback. So we'll get another look from the high camera. Turns up field, still working inbounds. Still in there. Looks like he's into me. Uh, that might be where he stepped out. But it is very close. That's where the hash mark is kind of right next to the boundary. So you can't tell exactly where he is stepping. I don't know if there's enough evidence to overturn it. Uh, the one thing that was not brought to the attention of the officials is that Tudin was actually moving before the snap. So he might have gotten away with that. Whatever the call is, great to see Tudin to finally have one of his type runs where he's on the perimeter breaking free, getting to the open field. There has been no indication from the booth as to which way this is going. I'm not sure there's enough evidence to overturn the call on the field. It is very close, though. Based on this view, it's certainly not enough, so... Definitely waiting to see what decision is going to be from the booth. That that right there was where it was close. So if you stop right there, and you see the footprint. That could be what they're looking at. It is very close. That's where the white on his cleat. You don't really see any green in between. Mm -hmm. But uh, there could be a, a millimeter in between there, and we wouldn't be able to tell. That's a great shot by our crew here in Greensboro. And the officials have not moved either way. Uh, there has been no tell. I, I don't know if they have enough evidence to overturn the call. But this is a very long review now. And at some point, the replay official, Tyrone Anderson, has to just make a decision either way because you don't want to interrupt the flow of the football game too much. And it looks like we're going to hear from our referee, Jake Grombach. Right. 
After review, the runner steps out of bounds at the 47 yard line. It'll be second and two. Clock will start on my signal. So they will say that Tootin did indeed step out of bounds right there at the, I think they said the 47 yard line. So that's a tough break for North Carolina A&T. It'll bring up second and two. The handoff to Tootin. And he is at that first down marker. That should be enough to move the chains. The real it's negative is that it takes a whole down. bunch of yards off the board for Tootin as he's trying to reach 100 today. Going for his ninth consecutive 100-yard rushing game. Play action, Fowler throws and completes it to Tootin. He's to the 20, the 10, shifts out and is taken down at the two. There's Barnett finding ways to get the, hand, get the ball in the hands of Tootin, not only through running the football. Nice play action fake. Tootin leaks out the backfield. First down and goal to go. From the Buccaneer two yard Great move. That was got a miss. Fowler will work with an empty set. First and goal from the two. Steps under center. Hands it off to Tootin, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, North Carolina A&T. And the Aggies take the lead for the first time today. That's what we're gonna have to, gonna have to have from the Aggie offensive line. Getting on guys, quick making lanes, twos downhill into the end zone, touchdown Aggies. Bayshaw Tootin has now scored a touchdown in seven consecutive games. The Aggies 6-0 when he reaches the end zone. We'll see if they can make it 7-0 today. He's eighth in the country with total touchdowns. As Andrew Brown shanks that one. And it remains a field goal differential in this ball game. As we head to a timeout in Greensboro, Bashal Tootin finds Pater. And the Aggies take the lead.
North Carolina A&T has the lead for the first time today. Bashal Tootin finding the end zone. That's been a good omen for the Aggies so far this season. Undefeated when number 33 finds the promised land. Kicking off for the Aggies, number 39, Andrew Brown, back deep. Andrew Brown missing a rare PAT, though. Right. Jake Lampert. As he sends this one deep and into the end zone for a touchback. Is in the end zone. So just a field goal differential in what has been a very tight ball game. At their 25. Here in Greensboro. Keeping an eye on action from elsewhere in the conference. Gardner Webb leading Campbell 28-14 with 7.26 to go in the second. That, of course, the barbecue bowl. The loser of that game has to buy a barbecue feast for the winner. One of the really cool rivalries in college football. Robert Porsche continues his great game. Another stop for him. Number 20, Hawkins on the carry. Stop made by number 94, Robert Porsche. Brings up second and 11. Brings up second down and 11. Shea's doing an awesome job of getting off the ball. Really securing that edge. Pressure is on, and Bartolo goes down as Jermaine McDaniel. Number six. Was able to get around the corner. With another sack to get back. It's McDaniel. Gets a step on that right tackle. Hands on Bartolo. Was able to get him off balance just enough that he fell to the ground. And it'll bring up third and 16 for Charleston Southern. Bartolo under pressure. Steps up in the pocket. Drops that one off and it'll hit the grass incomplete. And it'll bring up fourth down. So a three and out forced by the Aggie defense. A defense that has really been bending all day. Hasn't been broken too much, but has bent significantly. Great to see the Aggie defense get a three and out. Great play up front by the defensive ends. And pressure on that third down. Resulting in an incomplete pass. Gelb gives this one a ride. Rucker will let this one drop. It'll take a Buccaneer bounce and will be downed at the 41 yard line. So A&T's offense found the end zone for the first time today on its last drive down the field. They shall tootin. Starting to get involved a little bit more. Better drive by the offensive line of the Aggies. Brought a lot of physicality to that last drive. See if they can keep it going. I guess it's Buccaneer front. Fowler will shift out, and the Buccaneers moved. Let's see who moved first, though. And it'll be a false start. False start. Offense number 71. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So an unforced error there by that Aggie offensive front. And that'll back the blue and gold up five yards. a hole. He's to the 40 and is tripped up at the 42 yard line. Great job by Tootin to find the lane, getting downhill, working up the field. 
Buccaneers came out in the four-man front. Second down and nine for the Aggies. Fowler working quickly, gets it back to Tootin, has another hole, he's to midfield, and will run over the defender and is pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line. You have to love the physicality of Tootin. Across midfield. Not only can he hurt you with his speed. At the Buccaneer, 41. But also with low on the shoulder. See Toot running the football, scanning the field, looking and waiting to deliver the blow. Ball will be spotted at the 38-yard line. It'll be a first and 10 for a and in Buccaneer territory. That snap low. Fowler picks it up, still has time, launches it downfield, and it's almost intercepted. That play looked completely out of whack from the beginning. Very risky play by Fowler. Throws the ball deep. Jamel Johnson on the coverage. Dakary Wilson is the center today and been the starting center here for four years. And then Cesar Minaro ended up taking over those duties as Jerkari Caldwell is absolutely squashed over the middle. Caldwell's pass is complete to number 88. Caldwell. Stop made by number 14, Cooper. Brings up third down. Brings up third down and seven for the Yankees. Caldwell catches the football. However, the Buccaneer safety comes downhill. Delivers the blow. So Wesley Graves is the single back in the set. And now we have a whistle and a discussion amongst the officials. Not exactly sure what this is going to be about. Please reset the game clock for five minutes and 35 seconds. He'll start the game on my whistle. Needs to be reset. And there we go. We're good. Third and seven. Fowler steps up in the pocket, throws down the sideline, and that one will fall incomplete. Zach so, Leslie wanted a flag and will not get it. Charleston Southern coming out in the four-man front again. Running a great stunt off the edge. Almost got to Fowler. The a and offense is in no man's land right now, and it looks like they may go for it on fourth down or try and draw Charleston Southern off sides. The Aggies 7-15 on fourth down this season. Fowler throws. That one is complete to Burkhalter, and he's able to get the first down. Took a big lick and still held on to the pigskin. Great catch. Burke Halter maintaining possession through contact. Getting the Aggies another first down. We get another look. Fowler had some time to operate. Great catch. Secure the football. Tootin. He's got nowhere to go. His forward progress is stopped. Gary Sago was the a more, brick wall. The more you watch this Charleston Southern defense, it's easy to see they play with like a chip on their shoulder. They have something to prove. And 
guys really flying around. Striking the Aggies. This, this is a team that typically gives up 458 yards per game in offense. Not today, though. Fowler, play action, sets his feet, throws. That one is complete to Burkhalter at the 10. That Charleston Southern defense has to respect Bashal Tootin on the fake. Fake to Tootin. Flower flips his hips, sets his feet. It's Burkhalter. The second catch on this drive. First and goal from the nine. The handoff to Tootin. And he'll get caught up in traffic. Brings up second down. Siobhan Hill's on the stop. No gain. Second down and goal to go. Critical possession here for the Aggies as they try and make this a two possession game. Fowler looking, looking, has some room to run. He'll loft it into the end zone and that will fall incomplete. There is a flag on the play. Pass incomplete. There is a flag on the play. He might have been able to run that one if he wanted. Looked like it was plenty of grass in front of him. Easy path to the end zone. Are the officials looking to see if he crossed the line of scrimmage when he made the pass? And now receiver downfield, number 59 of the offense. That penalty is declined. Third down. They'll bring up third down after the ineligible man downfield. So one of the offensive linemen presumably saw Fowler running and thought he was going to take off. 59, four yards sharp. Was simply playing football. He was just trying to clear a path for his quarterback. Which is the right thing to do. Third down, goal to go. From so third and goal from the eight. Fowler looking. Throws to Tootin, and he's into the end zone. Give him six. Touchdown, North Carolina A&T. Tootin's second touchdown of the day. This foul dropping back. Looking for a receiver. Finds Tootin. Gets in the end zone. Love how Tootin plays with passion. Shows that he wants to be the guy. To put the team on his back and lead him to the promised land. 16 touchdowns on the year for Bayshaw Tootin as North Carolina AT takes a 20 to 10 lead here in Greensboro. We're back after this on ESPN Plus.
Bashal Tootin finds pay dirt for the second time today as North Carolina A&T extends its lead to 10 with 2.26 to go here in quarter number three. North Carolina A&T trying to extend its winning streak to seven games. Would also extend its streak to seven games when Bashal Tootin scores, A&T wins. When Bashal Tootin does not find the end zone, A&T's 0-3 this year for the only three blemishes on the campaign. And that is a loose ball after he touched it. And now it is a touchback. That was a very dangerous play by Jake Lanford. Kickoffs, that is a live football unless it goes into the end zone untouched. Definitely risky. But he was able to get his knee down before the Aggie defender got to him. So the Buccaneers will operate this drive beginning at the 25. Bartolo still in its, as the QB, the Tampa native threw just five passes a week ago in the win against Robert Morris. McDaniel bringing the pressure. Bartolo throws this one away. And it'll bring up second down. Great pressure off the edge by McDaniel. Jermaine McDaniel has been held in check the last couple of weeks. Starting to come alive here down the stretch when you need them most for the Aggies. Ruff through that defensive front, gain of a few, and it'll bring up third and long. It's interior lineman for the Aggie defense. Playing stout. Really holding their gaps. Able to hit run for a short game. First down, and that'll wipe away the penalty. Offside, number six of the defense. That penalty is declined. Result of play the first down. Antsy. So first and 10 from the 41 for the Bucks. Rough. Splits the defense right through the middle and is stopped just shy of midfield. Nothing spectacular about Rupp's running style. He just wants to get, get the football, get up the field as quickly as possible. Ruff. Ruff again on the carry. Ten, Taekwon King. Thirteen, Jacob Roberts in on the stop. Gardner Webb down in Bowie's Creek leading the Camels of Campbell 35-14. Cross midfield at the Aggie 49. Big matchup next week down in Boiling Springs. As Taekwon King will record the stop. The Big South Championship game next weekend. Gardner Webb, North Carolina AT. The Bulldogs came to North Carolina AT last year and took care of business. Though there was nothing on the line in that ball game. This year, a much different situation. A trip to the FCS playoffs will be awarded to the winner. Second and 15, Bartolo looking, looking. He is able to break away from two sack opportunities and slides in at the 47 yard line. And that'll bring up third down. Great job by the Aggies getting pressure. However, just couldn't wrap him up. And that's the Finish end the of tackle. The third quarter, your score. It's the end of the third quarter. Bartolo, elusive to end the third quarter. We head to the fourth here in Greensboro. We're back after these messages on ESPN Plus.
there's over 450 million hoopers out there. One will outscore the country and put Norman on the map. Less than 1% of high school players get a scholarship. Odds a freshman will lead the nation in points and assists? One ain't never been done. 1.3% of college players get drafted. Only one will drop 48 and 11 in the conference finals. One will know this is just the beginning. Trey had a one and a half billion chance to get here, but he saw a possibility. Technical event management and TEM video is your one-stop shop when it comes to presentation, commercials, live performances, instructional videos, sporting events, corporate training at 336-698-9095 or visit our website at www.temvideo.com. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. The B1 Performance Patch elevates physical functions by transforming carbs into glucose used to fuel the body. Don't compete without it. Visit buyb1.com or on social media at B1Patch. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Back with you here in Greensboro, 20 to 10. North Carolina A&T leading it against Charleston Southern. Dean of the Graduate College, Dr. Clay Glossler. And Dean of the College of Health and Human Sciences, Dean. It'll be third and nine from the 48 yard line. And now it'll be third and 14 from its own side of the field Offense for Charleston 66. Southern after that Five yard penalty. false start. Still third down. Early and there was no one in front of him. Bailey Ottaway committed the infraction. Pressure's on. And that will fall incomplete from Bartolo. Aggie sending the blitz. Great play call by the Aggies on third down. So it'll bring up fourth down. David Gelb on to punt. Back to punt number 19. Gelb, back to receive 82. Elijah Gets off a high booming kick. And that is a beauty. Went out of bounds. 
at the 13. I actually thought that was a generous spot. I do as well. Another great kick by Gelb. He has been absolutely phenomenal this year. One of the bright spots of this Charleston Southern team. Just always seems to get the job done and flip the field, make things as difficult as possible for the opponent. So Jalen Fowler will trot back on with Bashaw Tootin. Tootin, 78 yards to his name on the ground today. So he needs 22 more to continue his streak of consecutive 100-yard rushing games. He'll take this handoff, turns upfield, and is out to the 18. This brings up second and five for North Carolina A&T. And now with a 10 point lead and your opponent with two timeouts, you probably want to run the ball, ball more than you throw it just to keep that clock moving. There's the throw to Tootin. And his all-purpose yards continue to climb higher and higher. Great route by Tootin. Great catch. Strong enough to break tackles. Work up the field. Laquan Venny has checked into the game for the first time today. He's the slot man to the top of the screen. Kimbrough, the motion man. Graves, and he gets tripped up at the 35. 35, Wesley Graves on the carry. So a gain of two. Still getting chippy. The Aggie offensive line and Charleston Southern defensive line. If you love football, that's what you want to see. Fowler down the sideline finds Burkhalter at the 45. He's still on his feet, getting mauled. And his forward progress is stopped at the 41. Fake the Graves. Fowler throws it up the field. And Burkhalter, who makes a great adjustment, makes another great catch for the Aggies. Fowler has a year and a day, and there's no one there. Pass, Brings up second down and 10 for the Aggies. A lot of miscommunication on that one, but he had a ton of time to operate. Tackle, zigs and zags. He's across the 35 and is taken down there. I'll tell you what, the kid never falls back. He's always going forward, his forward lean, and just overall desire to get positive yardage. He's just 195 pounds, but his legs look like tree trunks. Plays as if he's 225. Tootin takes it, has some room, earns the first down and more. They show Tootin on the carry, and it's enough for another Aggie 
first down. That'll keep the chains moving as Tootin will come off for a breather. Starting to trickle up near where he will cross the century mark on the ground again. Cook is the motion man. Play action, Fowler surveying, throws towards the boundary, completes the pass to Leslie and he'll gain a few. That'll be marked at the 24 yard line. Second down and four at the Buccaneer 24 yard line. Great job by Fowler just to take what the defense is giving him. Find an open guy. Four on the play clock. A handoff to Kimbrough, and he is bottled up near the 20. Forward progress will stop at the 21. It'll be just shy of that first down marker. Show a little love to the fullback. Romello Kimbrough on the carry. Brings up third down and one. It's third and one. Fowler behind the offensive line, falls forward and is able to earn the first down to keep the drive alive. And the Aggies have entered the red zone. And it's enough for another A&T first down. Bashal Tootin back into the game. The Aggies trying to ice this one out here and finish off the home slate on a strong note. Working from the pistol. Play action, Fowler towards the end zone and it's intercepted by Jamel Johnson. And the Buccaneers stay alive. Charleston Southern has a chance to get back into this one. Jamel Johnson's second interception of the season. Back with you here in Greensboro. 
Jamel Johnson picks off Jalen Fowler. And the Charleston Southern Buccaneers have new life. Down 10. TJ Ruff on the carry. Stop made by number 97, Shamari Wallace. Oh, up second and seven. Yeah, that ball first was on 74. Did, did you see what he's saying? After this, I didn't see it. You didn't see it. Okay. So yeah, that happened he's from acting as if it's going against Charleston Southern. First one found him saying for. It was a dead ball personal foul. He pushed him back down as he was getting up. So that will back the Buccaneers up. Stop this shit after the play, guys. Two to three and a half. Second down and 11. Bartolo in the end zone, throws. That one is incomplete. Jordan had it and could not hold on. Great throw by Bartolo. Get the ball out. Especially after a bobble snap. Third and 11, Aggies looking to get off the field. Bartolo will operate from the end zone. After the personal foul. The handoff. And only a few yards to go for J.D. Moore. Haven't seen him too much today. A lot of pushing and shoving after the play. It's interesting history between these two teams. This is just the third time that they've played, but the previous two meetings have been very tight, ugly ball games down in Charleston. And you know that the Buccaneers would love to try and pull off an upset here. As Gelb will work from the very back of the end zone. The first matchup featured Jamaine Martin having a career night went for 299 yards at Buccaneer Stadium. Gelb kicks a short one. It'll take a Buccaneer roll all the way to the 34 yard line. My goodness. What a punt by David Gelb. I'll tell you, Gelb was a secret weapon. A&T's offense returns to the field after these messages. Leading by 10 on ESPN+. Plus. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we try and educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. Whether you're a contractor or do-it-yourselfer, Sunbelt Rentals is committed to making it easy to get the tools and equipment you need. With a vast network of locations across the U.S. and Canada, no one brings more yes to your project. Our broad inventory and dedicated team of experts makes equipment rental absolutely available, positively reliable, and unquestionably easy. Visit sunbeltrentals.com to reserve your equipment or find a location near you.
Musco Lighting. We make it happen. The name, the Hercules Tires strong move of the game, Tamon Cook taking it 95 yards to the house. Hercules Tires ride on our strength. Fowler towards the boundary. That one incomplete to Bowick. No flag on the play. And here we go. There's the Tamon Cook 95 yard return for a touchdown. Showing off that 4 3 speed. Put AT right back into the game. They trailed for 12 seconds at that point. Second and 10. The handoff to Tootin. Cuts it back inside. He's across the 40 and it's stopped at the 42. Strong run by Tootin. Here's Tootin again, and he's able to claw back to the 40, and it'll be a loss of one. So Caleb Brickhouse will punt this one away. Fourth and four. A and T up ten. Let's see if Brickhouse can give us a David Gelb type of point. A high spiraling kick. Jordan will signal for the fair catch and secures it at the twenty-eight yard line. So Charleston Southern. Coming down the stretch with two timeouts, trailing by 10. We're back after these messages on ESPN+. Plus. Back with you here in Greensboro, 648 to go. Charleston Southern down 10. It's first and 10 from its own 27. 
The handoff goes to Moore, and he is stopped after a gain of one. Bashal Tootin for North Carolina A&T at 100 yards exactly, and that is Janoris Robertson who's down. And that will be tended to by the A&T training staff. The Aggies up 10. We mentioned it, Alan, next week, the big one, Gardner-Webb, North Carolina A&T. It'll be a 12 noon kickoff to determine the conference champion. This game that matters most, all games matter, but that was for all the marbles and FCS birth playoffs. That's what you go to preseason camp for. And do all those sprints. A&T in search of its fifth FCS playoff berth. Bartolo throws that one behind his intended receiver, Vincent Davis, who has gone quiet since the first quarter. Bartolo's pass, incomplete. Aggie Nation, it's third. There's Damon Fleming Jr. calling in the signals. Played 27 snaps last week. Third and eight. Bartolo looking, looking. And he is flushed from the pocket, trapped and sacked. Back at the 18 yard line. It's Jermaine McDaniel. I mean, Daniel and Robert Porsche both get a piece of the action. Relentless pursuit by the both of them off the edges. They had a scheduled meeting at the quarterback, according to Google calendars. Great job. I tell you what, with being senior day, those guys are having a phenomenal game. Gelb with a high booming kick. Rucker will signal the fair catch and secure the football at the 35. Timeout on the field. We're back after this here in Greensboro. A&T leads it by 10.
back with you at Truist Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina. 5.31 to go. North Carolina a t leads it 20 to 10. A few weeks ago against Campbell, North Carolina a t took over the football late in a ball game with 6.06 to go and didn't give back possession to the Camels. North Carolina a t will look to do the same thing here as Bashal Tootin goes for a couple of yards, gave himself a little breathing room off of that 100-yard mark. Now nine consecutive ball games, over 100 yards rushing. Pretty remarkable what he's done. And really, when you think about it, Alan, the, the lineage of running backs here at North Carolina A&T over the last decade and a half and beyond, if, if you really want to stretch it out, uh, has just been tremendous. Phenomenal job by Tootin. Also have to, you know, of course, shout out offensive line. Making things happen for him. Just as much as it's his record is theirs. North Carolina a and offensive line has had a much better second half of this ball game. Uh, did struggle mightily with that Charleston Southern front three for the first half. The first offensive scoring drive seems like they woke up you know came out ready to play and attack the defenders I guess have been moving the football ever since Fowler under center broken play chatter on that sideline as to what just went wrong but the punt unit will come on get another look Caden Jordan camps under it and will try and return, but nowhere to go. He's met by a few Aggies. And his progress is stopped at the 22. So Charleston Southern will have a chance here to try and get down the field quickly with two timeouts. The Bucks are going to have to work through the air on this drive with it being a two score game. So you look forward to Charleston Southern trying to find matchups. Bartolo under pressure, steps up in the pocket, is on the run and will slide in safely at the 27 yard line. Brings up second and six. Bartolo canvassing. Throws over the middle. That one incomplete. Threw it behind Jordan. Eggs are trying to get lined up up front. The, the, the no huddle offense has really been a problem for North Carolina A&T this season. Certainly one that keeps the keep defense off balance. Especially if they're gashing you, the defensive unit can become extremely tired. J.D. Moore couldn't get his hands on it. That one got broken up. On the outside by Janaz Sumter. And quickly it's fourth down. And the Buccaneers have to go for it. Oh. 
too high safety look by the Aggies. Bartolo. Watch the clear out. Looks, throws. That one is intercepted. Joseph Stucky. No, they'll say it's an incomplete pass. But either way, it'll be A&T football, and it actually works out better for the Aggies if that one hits the ground because the line of scrimmage will be closer to the end zone. First down, North Carolina A&T. Quick throw by Bartolo, and it may have hit the ground. I'm actually not sure. I think it did. Line of scrimmage will be the 26-yard line. Big stop by the Aggies on fourth down. Now they look to finish the game. Get ready for the showdown in Boiling Springs. It'll be a big one next week. Gardner-Webb, North Carolina A&T, the Big South Championship on the line. Tootin breaks free from the first tackle and will roll out of the second one to the 22 yard line. And Tootin's day might be done as Wesley Graves has checked in. A&T going to run this clock down. 25 on the play clock. Allen, your assessment of the Aggies' offense today? Slow start. Definitely have to work on starting a lot faster, especially going to this team such as Gardner-Webb next week for the championship. However, when the Aggies began to play, they played well. A handoff to Graves. He gets tripped up in the backfield and will lose a yard. This Charleston Southern defense, for the most part, kept A&T's offense in check today. Seven of the points on the board belong to special teams. Very, very impressed with uh, the effort of Charleston Southern, especially to those the, that front seven. Those three guys in the middle really gave our offensive line a hard time. But they were able to you know, sustain drives and get into the end zone. Fowler looking, throws, and that one goes incomplete. And he took a big shot by Garrett Sega in the backfield. He stood flat footed back there. Tell you what, Garrett Sega is relentless. Not a very big guy, but plays with an attitude. Listen, at 5'9, only 210 pounds. It's fourth down for North Carolina AT. The Aggies are going to have to run one more play. Under pressure, throws towards the end zone, and that one is complete. It's complete. It's Kendrick Leslie who brings it in for the touchdown. Oh, there's a flag on the field, and this one might be coming back. Holding. Offense number 55. Ten guys are in previous spot. Replay fourth down. Dak Wilson got caught holding. And this one is coming back. So the Aggies will have to run one more play. It'll be fourth and 19 for North Carolina A&T. Third 
31 seconds to go in the ball game. Fowler looking, looking, throws over the seam, and it is picked off by Jamel Johnson for the second time today. He's going to run this one out to the 30-yard line. And Fowler took a shot back on the 45. Aggie fans, congratulations goes out to number 33. Shot by a big defensive lineman. Looked like Quentin, Quentin Segan. Quentin Segan got his hands on him and game. took him across the field. And that's not what you want to see happen to you. Starting quarterback, but he looks to be okay. Bashal Tootin has tied the Big South record for consecutive 100-yard rushing games. Special Nine third. consecutive 100-yard rushing games. That throw over the middle by Bartolo is incomplete. Bartolo's pass incomplete. 15 seconds to go. So North Carolina A&T, after starting the season 0-3 with losses to North Carolina Central, North Dakota State, and Duke, will now have won seven straight games and will have a chance at a Big South crown in its final go-around in the conference. Bartolo looking, looking, and he gets sacked by Devin Harrell. Flags come flying in. And we'll see if there is going to be one more play that has to be run. But that is not the way you want to end this one. There are going to be penalties, and I believe that the play was stopped with three seconds left. So we'll see how the officiating crew wants to handle this. I guess have to be a lot smarter in situations like that. Charleston Southern doesn't have as much to play for as the Aggies. Getting a little chippy. It's been boiling up here. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct number three of the defense. That penalty is declined. Started the game's over. And that's the ball game. And that's your ball game. Your final score. Your North, North Carolina A&T Aggies 20. So North Carolina A&T wins seven in a row. And we'll play for a Big South crown next week on the road against Gardner-Webb. It'll be a great win in Boiling Springs. It has been quite the season for the Aggies. Charleston Southern's year ends at two and eight, two and three in Big South play. Taking on Gardner Webb. Congratulations, Bishaw Tootin. And Bishaw Tootin's magical season continues. The Aggies will try and run him to a Big South Championship next week. For my partner, Alan Jones, and our tremendous Greensboro-based ESPN crew, I'm Spencer Turkin saying so long from Greensboro. You've been watching.